Functional modeling is a technique to abstract a system to better understand its process and the way it interacts with the surroundings. So an example that we can look at would be a blender. Now, at the surface level, what a blender does is it takes food and it turns it into a smoothie, but there's a lot of other functions that a blender also performs, and that's what a, a functional model can really help us with, and it really helps us understand how it interacts with the surroundings. So when we do a functional model, essentially what we do is we <coughs> abstract this entire blender into a, a box, a, a black box that performs a certain function. And in this case, our black box takes in uh, certain inputs, and these inputs can be of three types, energy, mass, and information. So the energy input, it can take in electrical energy, uh, and not it can, it takes in electrical energy. We, we have the blender plugged into the wall. Uh, it takes in mass in the form of food, unprocessed food to be specific, and it takes in uh, information from your hand. So when you're pressing a button, you're providing information to the blender. So your hand, uh, here we go, it takes in uh, information from your hand. Now, what happens to the electrical energy? The electrical energy gets inverted to mechanical energy, to sound, and to heat. And let's see, I want to make sure that's visible. The food gets converted into a paste or smoothie, right? And your hand, the signal that it provides, gets converted to a torque or speed that the blades turn at. A torque and speed, actually, a specific combination of those. And so now looking at these inputs and outputs, we can figure out what the function of the blender is. Well, what we see is that the food is converted into a paste. So the function of the blender is, of course, to blend food. We already knew that. But we can also see the other interactions between these inputs and outputs and how they're converted to get a better understanding of how the blender interacts with the surroundings. Now, <clears throat> if we want, we can actually reduce this blender, this function into a set of sub-functions and get a better, more thorough understanding of the blender's operations. So the way we can find these sub-functions is by using what's known as a function tree. So our main function is to blend food. Now that consists of first taking in a signal. We take in a signal, a signal. Then we convert that signal into digital output. So analog digital conversion. Uh, we also control the motor, so the motor control. Then the motor converts electrical energy to mechanical energy. And there's also some kind of pressure containment within the, the chamber of the, the blender. So that happens the pressure control. And for each of these, we can actually do another black box and kind of link them all together to see how uh, you have energy, mass, and information flowing within each of these subsystems to get a complete idea of how the blender works. And that's what I've done right here. So we can see that we start off with the hand it interacts with the sensor. Uh, so you have information coming in. Uh, that sensor uh, sends the analog output to a microcontroller, which uses electrical energy and an ADC converter to convert that analog output into a digital signal, signal which is provided to the motor controller, which again uses electrical energy to provide a certain voltage to the motor, which dictates its torque and its rotational speed. And the motor then provides rotational mechanical energy to the blades. And these blades blend the raw food and output your smoothie. And so that's basically how you do a functional model for a blender. It's a way to abstract, or blender any system, it's a way to abstract any system in terms of its inputs and outputs and get a better understanding of how it interacts with its surroundings and what its function exactly is.